Hey guys, today I've got a review on the Sparmax Max 35 airbrush. And I'll just go ahead and say it. I think this is probably the killer detail budget airbrush out there. And I'll even go a little further and say it's one of the best detail airbrushes I've used. And uh, so yeah, let's get into this and find out why I say that. And of course, when it's shipped to you, it comes in this nice little sleeve there. Stop. I don't need that no more. It comes in this little case. Got some like glitter finish inside it. Nobody really cares, right? So, and when you open up the case, it's gonna look something like this. This one has been used. I've been running this for a couple of weeks right now. So normally this, this little piece here would be sitting on. So it comes with a normal um, needle guard. And it comes with this one that's supposed to help you expose the needle a little bit better. And I don't like that stop. case. I'm probably just gonna throw those over here never to be found. All right, guys, I was kind of joking just a little bit about throwing those away. I do try to keep up with them, but I do lose them a lot because I never use a needle guard. Um, anyways, when you pull it out of the box, I'm gonna tell you that the fit and finish is really, really good quality on this airbrush. And this one's been running a couple weeks. As you can see, the bowl is very polished. I haven't had any issues with that. And like I said, it's been running for a couple weeks. I'm going to do a quick partial disassembly and talk about a couple of things. All right. So the head comes off like, you know, normal, uh, simply unscrews. This came with some kind of like a sticky substance, almost like a beeswax, but it's not. And I wish I knew what it was because it's actually really awesome. And the threads are very, very 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 smooth and it's got that sticky part that's where you would expose your nozzle i'm not going to disassemble it on this particular one but that's where your nozzle is this is a airbrush that you would have to unscrew the nozzle in order to do maintenance on it in the future i've been able to just do this hand tight and i've not had any issue whatsoever with head leaks to this point and i've been running it for several i'm going to pull the handle off and while i pull the handle off i'm going to talk about the needle limiter in this the needle limiter is it's got a resistance to it so it's very um easy to precisely adjust it takes a little bit of effort to turn it um if you use Sorry about that. If you use the needle adjuster, you'll appreciate that. I never use them. I run them wide open. Of course, I'm going to pull the needle out. As you can see, there's a little bit of dirt on it because I've been using it. Hey, I got to pull the barrel assembly out. Oh, actually, um, you know, basically the same as a WADA and many other, other manufacturers. Although the trigger in this is a little bit different than a lot of them. The trigger in this is like the Micron. Okay, those of you who have seen uh, a WADA Micron, you would know what this type of uh, trigger is like and it, the pin sits down in the air valve assembly there's a separate pin there and then this piece in here goes in here and you have to turn it and it runs in there and sits in there okay now word about that um, with that trigger assembly and generally that creates just a little bit less friction than the you know put together single well they're not really single piece but with a little swivel in them it makes the trigger a little bit smoother in reality this trigger is very smooth it's a little bit firm the springs are a little bit tight in it but i like my airbrushes to run that way um you could soften it up and they're always going to soften up over time the air valves you know fairly stiff got a nice detent where you really feel it uh, some people like soft triggers not a fan at all um, but this trigger is extraordinarily, extraordinarily smooth. One of the best triggers that I've actually put my hands on. Um, I had one of these airbrushes when I first started airbrushing and I gave it away to somebody because I didn't understand how to really work with it, I guess, at the time. And I wound up buying my water Eclipse and I just thought, well, that's, you know, that's the good airbrush and I'm just going to give away this thing. And I really had regretted it later once I realized things. So I had one and used it for a while. Now I've got one again and realized there's some changes they've made to the Max 35 since then. And all of them have been for the better. Okay. Hopefully you can see the difference. I kind of doubt it. But um, on the top is my Olympus Micron. The middle is my Sparmax Max 35. And on the bottom is the Awada eclipse needle why did i want to show you guys those needles well because 
all .35s are not created equal. The taper on this is, the angle taper on this is very, very long and very, very pointed. Even more, much more so than what's on my Eclipse. And really, really similar to what's on my Olympus Micron, which is a .21. And so, in essence, because of how gradual that is, that gives you more fine detail capability. All right, so there's a little bit of view with them put together, the uh, Eclipse being on the top and the Sparmax being on the bottom. And hopefully you can see the difference in that, how the Eclipse doesn't stick out quite as far and is a little more blunt than the needle on this. All right, so now all that really doesn't mean anything unless the spray's good, right? So let's go over here and do some As uh, a comparison, I want to put these technical pencil lines over here, but I'm also going to come off the side of this technical pencil, which can get just ridiculously sharp and crisp edges if you use the side of your technical pencil and do quick strokes like that. So just for some comparison, I'm putting these in here so that you all can see them so we know what this line is. Okay, I got some golden high flow in here, and I've got about 15 PSI. I'm going to do some wider sprays with it first. So, you know, you because it's a point three five, yeah, you can you can get actually if you pull back on it, you can get some pretty good coverage. And you know, at this level, um, where I've run it right now, you know, you can get some pretty pretty good sized lines. So that's uh, obviously none of this is detail, and I'm able to get in here and work with good atomization. Okay, I'm going to come over here. So now I have put a little reducer in there. And I've come over here. I'm going to come over here by my technical pencil lines. And I'm going to put a couple lines in. A couple. Dull lines. And then I'm going to come in here. And come in here and get some sharper. So we're going to go ahead and throw this up on speed here and turn the speed up just a little bit. So that, uh, you guys just see me make, going through it, making some um, lines. And then I'm going to get in here and reduce it down here shortly. I'm just going through making some random lines so you can show that it's not, uh, you know, just a one shot thing. Probably need to add just a little bit more reducer to that and I can turn that pressure down significantly. I had it earlier today, I was running um, below five PSI and I literally could probably get some lines in here that I couldn't pick up on camera. Bear in mind, these were my technical pencil lines over here. I'm going to turn down that pressure a little bit more, add a little bit more reducer. Well, I've got to mention a couple of things. One is you guys, I will have links down in the description below, and I'll have links into uh, comment below so that you guys can click on the links. If you happen to be in Canada, north of the border of the United States, I highly recommend you check out Maple Airbrush Supply. Check out Donna Bush over there. She's a friend of mine. I am not sponsored in any way. Any of the materials that I buy come out of my own pocket. So you guys clicking those links help me out. But you purchasing from Donna is probably just going to help you out. Y'all take care of your supplier up there in Canada, up north of the border, all right? Um, yeah, like I said, no sponsorship. She's not putting me up to this, doing this on my own. Anyway, let's get back into it. I'm putting some dots in here. And I have to be careful about that because I can put them dots in so tiny that the camera really won't focus on it.
All right, so nothing can be perfect, and there's always compromises, right? So nothing's perfect. Um, it's pretty versatile. Very extraordinarily good at details. Matter of fact, I've reached for this instead of my Micron in the last little bit. And so it's very good at that. My biggest gripe, size of this cup. All right, so if you like to mix in the cup like I do, oops, see that? And actually, that's where all this paint come from. I actually splattered it out. With the lid, I was back flushing, and it popped out of the air hole and sprayed plattered paint all over me. And aside from the color cup, I really don't have a whole lot to complain about. Parts are ready, readily available for this, so it's not like you can't pick them up. Um, I guess one of my biggest gripes is you might actually have trouble finding this particular airbrush. Um, there's not a whole lot of them available on Amazon right now. I'm going to leave you guys a link, but I expect shortly after this video drops, they will be gone like within a day or two. Um, there's because there's only like six available right now. You can go over to Dick Blix has the SP35, which has the same nozzle and needle combination, only it doesn't have a limiter built into it. It has a cutaway handle, uh, which actually I kind of like cutaway handles anyway, so probably would have been better if I got an SP35. The SP35 goes for about a hundred bucks. This particular airbrush goes for about eighty dollars. Um, so that would be the downside of getting an SP35 instead of a Max 35, you know, about $20 difference. Actually, it might be less than $80. I, I mean, I just bought it a couple weeks ago. I think shipped and all, it was just over $80 to the door. Um, Sparmax has been around a long time. For those of you that are unfamiliar with them, they've been making airbrushes since the 1970s. They have a joint manufacturing with Iwata in so if you've ever had an Iwata air compressor, you probably have a Sparmax air compressor. They make compressors for Iwata. They make other things too. I'm sure hoses and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but Iwata, but Sparmax has been around for a really, really long time. They are a well-known and respected brand. Um, we just tend to not hear about them a lot here in the United States. All right, guys. So that's paper I've been doodling on. I've actually done some other work with this, and I've gotten tighter than that even. Um, it just doesn't really look at that impressive until you realize that these lines are literally half the size of what I can accomplish with a technical pencil. And you, so that, when you put that in perspective of the size of the technical pencil versus how big that airbrush is, you realize you're getting in there pretty, pretty darn tiny. And, and it's repeatable. You can do it over and over again. So I'm absolutely loving this airbrush. I'm going to compare multiple airbrushes that are in the budget category. So let's say, I don't know, you guys tell me down below, if you want me to cap that like 125 bucks and below, um, I'm gonna do a roundup of airbrushes and you know, I got others on the bench and so I'm gonna have multiple reviewed together. So I'm gonna side by side comparison. So, so instead of just having this review, I'm gonna do individual reviews on all of the airbrushes or not all of the, you know, ones I can get my hands on. And then I will do a comparison video of the budget branded airbrushes and do them all side by side. So you can literally see the strength and weaknesses where you can see the airbrushes compared exactly next to each other instead of just having to try to go from one video to the next. But uh, for those of you guys who are new here, my name is Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry. And I hope you got something out of the video today. I'm going to have some more tutorials for you guys soon, guys. I know I dropped five videos for a long term for one long video and to realize that's one tutorial but it is five parts i just dropped last week so you know that's, that's a whole lot of content hour and a half two hours i don't even remember how many hours worth of footage that was i am going to have some more tutorials i'm really 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 busy oh also i am heading to the tamco takeover at the beginning of may so that's another reason i'm really busy i got to get everything done because at the first week of may i'm going to tamco takeover in hampton virginia if you've never been to an event like this i'm going to be there if you're going to be there let me know down below or if you're thinking about coming let me know down below i would love to beat you while i'm out there i'm going to be out there for the entire week and i expect that it's going to be an awesome and marvelous time uh, you know so yeah anyway guys i'm going to get out of here i appreciate y'all we will talk to you next time